Welcome to the bottom of the rabbit hole. Salute to all the Matrix University subscribers tuning in, you are appreciated. In this video, we are going to talk about the last Matrix comic featured in the 20th anniversary edition playlist, Let It All Fall Down. That means this video will contain spoilers, and if this is your first time down here, or you want to know everything about the Matrix universe, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you do not miss out on any future yellow-pilled content. The story and art for Let It All Fall Down was created by Paul Chadwick. Chadwick is known for his comic series, Concrete, about a man trapped in a rock-coated body. He has also worked as a storyboard artist on such films as Strange Brew, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, and Miracle Mile. Within the Matrix universe, Chadwick is credited with the creation of two additional Matrix comics, the first of which is titled The Miller's Tale, which features the only version of Young Morpheus that is officially canon, and the second of which is titled Deja Vu. Of course, I will leave links to those videos in the description for anyone who missed them. Paul Chadwick is also known for being the Wachowski-appointed story writer for The Matrix Online. I remember reading Let It All Fall Down as a webcomic online while the MXO servers were still active. The story shifted my perception of Neo in a way, so let's get into it. Let It All Fall Down starts with a computer programmer named Peter Shop, and his field of research involves evolving programming objects. EPOs are human-created programs who rewrite their own code to fix their own glitches and anticipate the user to become more efficient as they evolve. Due to their lack of limitations and unpredictable nature, letting them out of the closed network and onto the internet, for example, would be reckless. All the more reason why Peter is so surprised when a colleague informs him that their boss, named Hardin, is experimenting with Peter's creation. Hardin combined Peter's EPOs with his own interrogative agents, designed to scrape the internet and conduct surveillance. When Peter confronts his boss about the potential danger, Hardin tells Peter, that he has the board's full support and it isn't his problem, which doesn't sit well with Peter at all. Peter decides he'll teach Hardin a little lesson by recruiting a hacker he knows by reputation only named Rain to hack into Hardin's system and steal an EPO. Confident that his scared straight scheme will work, Peter slept well that night until Rain calls Peter in the middle of the night to share what was found. On the phone, Rain sounded like a kid but when Peter arrives at the apartment, he realizes that Rain is not a teenager, but instead a young woman. Rain immediately gets to business and shows Peter that one of the EPOs is streaming live video. The live feed is showing human pods in the power plants of the real world. As the two try to make sense of it all, Peter reads the names of the text and sees Hardin's name, making Peter aware that he is looking at a hairless Hardin in a real world pod. Rain asks who that is. As Peter explains that Hardin is a colleague, he also notices there are more names listed and finds his own name. Rain notices that Peter is making the exact same facial expression as the version of him showing in the real world pod that they are watching on the surveillance screen. Agents suddenly pull up to the apartment. Rain tells Peter to throw her futon out of the window. They use it to break their fall as they jump out of the window to evade the agents. They get in Peter's car and they head towards the office to try to get to the bottom of this, but they pull up to the office building only to find it had been completely replaced by a shopping mall. Peter retreats to the only safe place he can think of, a clandestine off-grid cabin tucked deep behind brush on his brother's property. Inside, Rain explains that her ex-boyfriend taught her everything she knows about hacking. She also explains that once she realized what the EPOs were doing, she started downloading everything to CDs. As they investigate the footage, Peter begins to put the puzzle pieces together just before the battery to her laptop dies. They then talk into late hours of the night, then try to get some sleep, but Peter can hear Rain crying softly, so he holds her for comfort, and they finally fall asleep. In the middle of the night, Rain wakes up scared, looking for Peter as he left the cabin to get them water. A relieved Rain hugs Peter, and in that moment he realizes he has to release the EPOs out into the world. Rain says that her ex-boyfriend can help. Peter is hesitant to involve any additional people due to the stakes already being so high. Peter is also concerned that contacting her ex could get them caught if he is being monitored, but Rain insists. They go to refuel at a gas station. Rain goes to make the call to her ex-boyfriend. Peter asks her real name. She says, Olivia Thompson, with an E. Peter hesitates to pay for the gas with a credit card, fearing the transaction could be traced by the agents. 
he goes inside to pay for the gas with cash instead. While waiting on the line, Peter wondered how did Olivia pay for the phone call. As Peter looks out the gas station window, he sees the agents getting out of the car. Rain sees the agents too, but turns and opens fire. The agents shoot her down where she stands, through the glass. Peter finds himself throwing up in the bathroom. He waits for the agents to come and kill him, but they didn't even know he was there. When Peter opens the bathroom door, the convenience store is operating as if nothing ever happened. No blood stains, no broken glass, no dead body. For a day he despaired, but his sadness turned to rage, then purpose. Peter was determined to finish what they started. Peter breaks into an internet cafe and loads Hardin's modified EPO onto every single computer inside. One by one, he prepared emails with EPOs attached, addressed to hackers, tech sites, TV networks, and even the Pentagon. Peter clicked send on all the emails, but when he goes to the door to leave, it will not open. Suddenly, he notices that is the only door in the room. Cars pull up to the internet cafe, and Peter knows it is game over. He desperately tries to throw a chair at the window, but the laws of physics bend, and instead of the glass breaking, it flows like taffy. As he falls to his knees, Peter half notices that one of the monitors is showing him in the real world. He can see himself being euthanized by lethal injection in the real world as the agents open fire upon him in the digital world. From his perspective, Peter sees three realities superimposed, but somehow, in his final moment, Peter has vision and power. The streaming green data is his to read and briefly manipulate. He searches for Olivia Thompson, but the system confirms that her body was recycled. Peter knows she is truly gone. Peter can see that one or two of the EPOs seem to survive. With his last thought, Peter hopes that they might awaken others to bring anarchy to the system. And the ending to this story is a big reason why this is one of my favorite Matrix comics of all time, because it really forced me to think about what it would mean if a self-aware AI was created inside an environment that was built by a different, independent, self-aware AI. It is a pretty radical thought experiment when you really take a moment to think about it. For anyone who doesn't know, Beyond the Glitch was the original short film we made here on this channel. It premiered on the same day as The Matrix Resurrections. So happy two year anniversary to us both, and make sure you watch and share it with any and every Matrix fan you know. The story was always designed to be a sequel to this comic, and hopefully this video will help you find the now obvious Easter egg that no one found previously. And since we are on the subject of original content, check out the Agent Syndicate webcomic for free at agentsyndicate.online. If you want to see more content in the future, I strongly suggest you give it a download. And if you have already, please know that you are always appreciated. You should also be aware that any proceeds from purchases at any of our merch stores or donations will be used for the production of future original content. Of course, I'll leave all the links in the description of this video. And remember, as one realizes that one is a dream figure in another person's dream. That is self-awareness.